Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> y'all ready for the word? I don't know about y'all, but I am ready for this word tonight. God has really, I believe that God has placed a word on the inside of me that if you take a hold of it, it'll change the very course of your, the rest of your life. <clears throat> so before I get started, um, I just want to thank, thank our pastors just for the opportunity for me to be before you guys on tonight. Um, I don't take it for granted that they would trust me um, to be before you to share a word. And so pastors, I just thank you for, uh, for just who you are. Um, but listen, I'm ready for the word, but before I know uh, Elder Tracy has already prayed, but uh, let me pray again if I can. Father, I thank you for all that you're doing this time and season of our lives, God. God, I thank you that you would allow me to come before your people on tonight, Lord God, to break the bread of life, God. God, I thank you that even now, Lord God, that you're softening their hearts, that you're preparing their hearts for your word on tonight, Lord God. And God, I ask that, that your voice goes behind my voice, Lord God, that goes before my voice, Lord God, and that it meets your people right where they are, God. And so God, I thank you for all that you're doing in your people and through your people. And I thank you that even now, Lord God, you're causing change to take place, Lord God, by the word that they see, hear, and understand. And for this, I give you praise, I give you honor, and I give you glory. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So listen, let me, before I get started, a uh, quick story real quick. Um, that song that played uh, tonight by commission, Ordinary Just Won't Do, that song has a very special place in my heart. Um, when Commission came out with this reunion tour album, it was during the time of my life that honestly, I was in probably one of the most darkest places of my life. And um, my wife and I was, had just separated and uh, we were really contemplating divorce. And uh, I know some of you have heard my story before, but during that time frame, um, I, I, had a, I moved in with a with roommate good friend of mine, still a, one of my best friends today. And um, during this time frame, man, I was, I felt like I had really honestly just lost everything, right? And so uh, I, I, I got to the point where, you know, after I finished wiping all the tears uh, away, I, honestly, I was ready to hit the streets, you know? How many know that, you know, when, when, when you find yourself in a place where you, where you, where you, feel like, and, and it's really deception, but you feel like you're not wanted, um, that you start to look other places to feel wanted by, uh, you, by the world. And so that's where I was. Um, and I, I began to talk to my friend about this. And, uh, and honestly, I was expecting him to say, hey, let's go. You know, <laughs> I was expecting him to say that to me. But what happened was, what happened changed my life, uh, honestly, to, to this day. Uh, instead of him saying, hey, 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 let's go. He said, listen, man, we're going to pray. <laughs> he said, what you're not going to do is get in these streets. He said, because at the end of the day, that's your wife. And so we're going to pray. And because, and, and because we're going to pray, we, I, he said, I believe that with God, anything is possible. Right. And so in that, he just, uh, you know, he, we grabbed hands and we began to pray. And, um, and he began to play this commission album. And, uh, and from that day, man, I heard that song, Ordinary Just Won't Do. And it just began to minister to me right where I was in the moment, right where I was. And I, and I, and I began to realize that I was looking for something. I was, I was looking for an ordinary love, but God had an extraordinary love waiting on me. I was looking for an ordinary love, but God had something that was extraordinary that was gonna change the rest of my life. And so I, as I began to, to, to meditate on that song and, 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 and we began to, my friend and I just began to go before the Lord as it relates to my marriage, as it relates to my family, this song literally pulled me out of the pits of hell. <laughs> that song literally pulled me out of the pits of hell during this time in my life. And, and I'll never forget him for that. How many know that, man, we need friends like that. All of us need friends that are, that are tell us when our stuff stinks. 
All of us need friends that'll grab hands with us and pray with us when times get hard, when times get rough. All of us need that type of friend. And so I just can't thank God enough for my friend. Um, again, we're still best of friends to, to this day. And, uh, and we still, you know, we call each other, you know, here and there. We still, you know, reminisce on those times where, and just thank God that, uh, that we were there for one another during, during that time frame of our, of our lives. Uh, and so tonight, you know, our pastors, you know, as Elder Tracy stated, we're starting a new series called Relational Intelligence. And, uh, and I have the privilege of kicking it off tonight. So when they gave me this assignment to teach on relationships, and as I mentioned, uh, and, and as I meditated on the topic, uh, the Lord just began to deal with me on this, on this, on this subject of friendship. And so tonight, that's, why, that's what I wanna talk about, friendship. The Lord began to share with me how friendship or the ability to be a friend is the core, is at the core of every healthy relationship. I'm gonna say that again. Friendship or the ability for you to be a friend is at the core of every healthy relationship. And so in other words, your ability to become a true friend in any relationship has a direct impact on how well that friendship flourishes. You know, you see in any relationship, whether it's marriage, whether it's a parental relationship, whether it's siblings, whether it's, you know, other relatives, people that you might meet on your job, people in the church, you know, at some point, your ability and the other person's ability to be a friend is vital to the success of that relationship. It's vital, right? And so I'll give you an example. You know, my wife and I, you know, we have two adult children. Uh, when they were babies, our roles as parents was to nurture them, was to love them, right? Was to protect them, you know, was to care for them, was to train, you know, train them up, educate them, all those things, right? Well, you know, as they began to mature, while, you know, still being their parents, we also had to transition, if you will, to becoming friends to them, you know? And so, Tonight, at this point, I'm talking to parents, right? I'm talking to parents who might have adult children. Um, right, right now, um, you, you cannot have the mentality, if you will, that it's my way or the highway when it comes to your adult children. Why am I saying this? Why? Because you, you, can't, you just simply cannot discount your children's feelings, their thoughts, you know, their opinions. Well, I mean, you can but it's just not healthy for the relationship. You can do that, it's just not healthy. Um, the same goes for any other relationship. There has to be a mutual understanding that it's a relationship, not a dictatorship. It's a relationship, it's not a dictatorship. And the core of the relationship is based on my ability to become a friend. It's based on that. You see, my wife is my wife, but she's also my best friend. She's also my closest friend. My uncle is my uncle. But as our relationship goes to another level, because we are also friends. She's my uncle, but when we when we go into that friendship mode, when we begin, when we learn to, when we learn to be friends, it took our relationship to an entire different level. You know, I know that many of you can say the same for some of your relationships. You know, you could, you know, you might have parents, siblings, you know, this, that, and the other, that when you became, when you began to become good friends, it took that relationship to a whole nother level, right? It took that relationship to a whole nother level. So tonight, you know, I really want to dig into this subject called friendship, you know, and take a look at what God says about friends. You know, what does God say about friends? I believe that God has given us clear instructions on how to be a good friend, on how to be a good friend. And we're, you know, we're living in a time, if we're honest, that, you know, we need good friends. I don't know about you, but I, I need good friends. And if you say, you know, if you say that you don't really need friends, I would submit to you that you're really missing out on the most, one of the most important aspects of God and who he is. You know, listen, we were created to connect with one another and a friendship can be one of the most fulfilling relationships, you know, anyone can experience. 
And so the first point that I want to make to you tonight is that a true friend is a gift. A true friend is a gift. You know, I can remember one day I found myself scrolling through my phone, looking at my contacts, right? Got a lot of contacts in my phone. But one thing that I realized was there were very few contacts that I felt that I could actually count on if I truly needed them in a time of an emergency, right? And so you see what I wanted or what I was looking for was that brotherly friendship that, that's described in Proverbs 17, verse 17. Uh, and this is, this is read out of the New Living Translation. It says this, it says, a friend is always loyal and a brother is born to help in time of need. A friend is always loyal. And then a brother is born, it says a brother is born to help in time of need. You see, I didn't have, I didn't really need 20 close friends, but I did want, you know, two, one, you know, two or three brothers that would stick by my side in good times, in bad times. And here it is, listen, in inconvenient times. You know, sometimes, you know, things can be inconvenient and, and that's and that's a true test of friendship when things are inconvenient for you, whether or not you're able to be there for one another. Amen. And so this is the type of as I as I search the scriptures, look, this is the type of friendship that Jesus actually provides for us. You know, he's that friend that he's there for us no matter what. He said he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. You know, he's always there for us even in the inconvenient times, even in the times that, that's not most comfortable for one another, right? And so he provides that safe place to be loved as we are. But also here it is also to be challenged to become more like him. You know, he, again, he provides a safe place for, to love us, but then he also challenges us to be more like him. You know, knowing how Jesus invites us in and invites us in and loves us, that's a great way to discern the gift of a trusted friend. That's an excellent way to discern whether or not you have a trusted friend, trusted friend knowing how Jesus invites us in, in and loves on us. Proverbs 18 and 24 says this, and this is out of the, the Passion Translation. It says, some friendships don't last for long, but there is one loving friend who is joined to your heart closer than any other. <laughs> That's Jesus. Amen. Friends, listen, friends who stick close may seem rare and hard to find. But listen, I encourage you to pray and ask God to reveal who those friends are that you can reach out to and invite into an authentic relationship. You know, pray, you know, pray to God about that. If you if you want, if you're one of those who who, who find yourself in the place where, you know, you really want a, a true friend, pray and ask God for that. And I believe that he'll deliver that for you. Listen, this is not the time to be out on the island by yourself. This is not the time. We need each other. You know, I can remember when I first came to Victory, I remember Pastor Zaman, he used to always say, you only know what you know. And you know, and uh, and don't know what you don't know. You know, that's one of the things that really stuck. Look, you only know what you know, and you don't know what you don't know. And so, but when you connect with others, now you have the ability to experience a part of God that you would have never experienced had you not connected. You know, in other words, there's something on my life that you need, and there's something on your life that I need. But if we never make the decision to connect. We're, we're missing out on a part of God that, that he wants for us. Amen. Listen to what it says in uh, Proverbs 27 and 17. It says this iron, a very familiar scripture, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend, right? And so it's important that, you know, in, in friendships, that we be that iron that sharpens one another. You know, sometimes, you know, you can, you can find people who's, you know, like we like we like to call yes men, right? That's not the friend that you want or need. You know, you need a friend that's going to challenge you, especially in the things of God. And so I just encourage you again, 
to seek those, those type of friends out. And so another point that I wanna to make to you on tonight is in regards to friends is that, that we have to bear with one another. We have to bear with one another. What do I mean? You know, I've, I've come to learn, you know, over the years that friendship should really come with a warning label. You know, beware, friends may disappoint you at some, at some point in time. <laughs> That's the warning label, beware. At some point in time, you may, you may get disappointed by a friend, all right? Especially when you do life together. You know, oftentimes it's the little things that add up to bigger things such as, you know, a friend not communicating as often as you would like, you know, or maybe a friend took a joke too far or, or even worse, you know, a friend did something spiteful to you or did, and didn't apologize as you thought they should. Uh, now you're nervous about trusting them again, right? When these types of things happen. You know how it go, man. Girl, I can't believe she was talking to her, knowing I don't rock with her like that. You know, knowing all, she, she over there talking to her, knowing I don't rock with her like that. You know, it's those type of things. Somebody say friends can be messy at, at, at sometimes. Friends can be messy sometimes, right? Now say that includes me. <laughs> that includes me too, <laughs> amen. <laughs> Look at what it says in Colossians chapter three, verse 13. This is a Apostle Paul, he writes this. He says, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you, you also must do. So listen, if you have any, anything, any complaint against another person, then you have to forgive them. Why? Because Christ forgave us. You know, I always, I always look at it this way. Man, I don't, who am I not to forgive? That's, 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 the, that's the perspective that I take on. Like when, when things happen and I understand that, you know, people, you know, we all have bad days, right? And so we have to be able to give that grace to one another and say, you know what, maybe they just having a bad day, you know, so I forgive them, you know? But in that, it's like at the same time, who am I not to forgive? Why? Because man, God has forgiven me. Christ has forgiven me for so many things, continues to forgive me for so many things that I have no choice but to forgive. Amen. Here's, what, here's how that same verse in the Passion Translation, it says it this way. It says, tolerate the weakness of those in the family of faith, forgiving one another in the same way you have been graciously forgiven by Jesus Christ. If you find fault with someone, release the same gift of forgiveness to them. My God, if you find fault with someone, release that same gift of, it, the forgiveness is a gift. Release that same gift of forgiveness to them. You know, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we are to bear with one another's weaknesses and offer forgiveness when it fosters reconciliation. We have to bear with one another in these times. At the same time, this does not, this does not mean, uh, you know, to blindly accept abuse. That's not what I'm saying. But we just have to discern. Uh, we, have, we have to have discernment and seek unity when it comes to the kingdom of God, when it comes to the family of God. We have to have that discernment. And our goal is unity, you know, because anything outside of that, it goes against everything that God stands for. So as we pursue friendship, it's important to remember to believe the the best of one another's intentions. Listen, my, you know, my wife will tell you, I'm one of those ones that, man, I, I honestly, I believe the best of everybody. Like I give everyone the benefit of the doubt, you know, and, that, and that, that's, just, that's just who I am. Why again? Because I understand that we all have bad days. We all have bad days. So it's just so important that we, that we give grace in that area, amen. And so, you know, when I, so, so for me, you know, when I feel like somebody's, you know, might be acting funky towards me or, you know, knowing that I haven't done anything to them, I just chalk it up again as them having a bad day. And what I do, my response to that is I pray for them. That's my response. I begin to pray for them. Why? Because they might need it. We all need prayer. 
you know, so it's nothing that should be your response in those times. Just pray for them, you know, and then we, we must also seek clarity. And, and here it is. Listen, kind communication. Kind. Look, can we just be kind to one another? <laughs> Amen. You know, we have to seek kind communication. You know, Romans 12 and 10 tells us this. It says, love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Psalms 133 and one, it says this, how wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. That's a very familiar scripture, amen. And so the next point I wanna to make to you as it regards to friendship is that we have to encourage one another. We have to encourage one another. I mean, to know that life gets hard enough without us tearing one another down. Life is already hard enough without us, tear, you know, tearing each other down. You know, great friendships are ones that encourage one another and build each other up, not backbiting and gritting, gritting on each other. You know, that's not a, that's not a friendship. Ecclesi Ecclesiastes 4 shows us why, you know, why, why it's to have encouraging friendships. You know why it's important to have encouraging friendships. It says this in four, nine, and ten. And this is out of the uh, easy reading translation. It says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But listen to this. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Because when the Bible says, whoa, that's a, that's a place where you need to really pay attention. It says, woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Our friendships are designed to encourage each other, each other in our faith. You know, together, we, listen, together, we can grow through anything. We can, we, can, we can go through anything together. There is nothing that we cannot conquer when we, when we are together. Amen. You know, I believe that um, God is using you today like never before to grow and support the work of the kingdom through your connections and friendships that you build. I believe that God is using our friendships to build the kingdom. He's using our friendships to connect with one another so that the kingdom is expanded. Amen. And so the next point I want to make is that we need to keep our eye on the prize. Keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye on the prize. What do I mean by that? You know, I kind of realized that, you know, even after cultivating, you know, my relationship with the Lord and my relationship with my family and friends, I'll, I'm still going to fall short of being, of having a perfect friendship. Still going to fall short in that area. And I came to realize that we are imperfect people trying to mimic the holy union of God. We are imperfect people trying to mimic the holy union of God, right? So we just had to realize, listen, we're, gonna, we're not gonna always get it right, you know? And though, you know, we may experience beautiful moments with our friends, um, that's only a glimpse of what's to come. And what I mean by that, What's to come is that we're at some point, we're gonna be able to dwell with God, dwelling in perfect communion with God, but then also with one another. When we get to heaven, we're gonna dwell, we're gonna be able to dwell, we, we're gonna be in perfect union and perfect dwelling with God as well as one another. Why am I saying this? Look at Revelations 21, verse three, it says this. It says, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God, here it is, is with man. He would dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. Listen, he would dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. So listen, when, bad, when the bad days hit, and you feel discouraged in your friendships, remember there's so much more that God has in store for us concerning our friendships. There's so much more.
you know, we make a decision to love and bear burdens even when our hearts are hurting. And that's a decision that we have to make. Even when your heart is hurting, make a decision that we're gonna, you know, that we're gonna love, we're gonna, we're gonna bear each other's burdens. And we choose mercy and forgiveness over frustration and bitterness. That's our goal, choose mercy and forgiveness over frustration and, bit and bitterness. Why? Because we love because he, he first loved us. <laughs> That's why. We love because he first loved us. Together with God is a truly beautiful place to be now and for eternity. This is the prize that I'm talking about that every believer should be shooting for. Keep your eye on the prize. What's the prize? To dwell in his house to dwell in this house. So listen, I've given you some, some good nuggets and some good tips on how to be better friends with one another. But now I really wanna transition into taking a look at what, what it looks like to be friends with God. What does that look like, to be a friend of God? Amen. One of the things that really stood out to me and as I began to study you know, the book of John is that after years of, uh, of the apostles following Jesus around, uh, listening to him, learning from him, you know, seeing him perform miracles, you know, all of those things. At one point he turned to them and he calls them friends. He turned to them and he calls them friends. And you know, there are other, others throughout scripture that are called friends, you know, friends of God is Moses, Abraham, Lazarus, you know, just to name a few. So I thought, man, you know, what an honor it is to be called a friend of God. Think about that. That's a true honor. When God calls you friend, it's an honor to be a friend of God. That's an honor. This is what Jesus said in, in John 15 and 14. Uh, and this is out of the New Living Translation. He says this, he says, you are my friends. Here it is, this is a conditional word. If you do what I command. I'm gonna read that again. You are my friends if you do what I command. Then he goes on to say, I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the father told me. And man, when I read that scripture, when he talks about, you know, you are my friends since I've told you everything the father told me. When you think about a close friend, Close friends tell each other secrets. Close friends, you tell your close friends some of the things that you don't tell anybody else, right? And so when Jesus talks about them being friends, he's now able to share with them what the father shares with him, right? That's, that's a close friend. He's able to share it in, in, better, in, in better terms. He's, he's able to share those secrets, if you will, that's from the father. You know, so if you look at this scripture, you know, from a worldly view, you know, it may be hard to associate friendship with obeying. If you look at it from a worldly standpoint, you're talking about, I have to obey you in order for, in order for me to be your friend. Think about that, you know, in a natural, you know, a natural friendship. What? <laughs> I need to obey you in order for, in order for us to be friends? Nah, cuz. You know, but but we have to understand that, you know, God, he's not like us. His ways are not our not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Right. And so he he thinks different than us. You know, he reasons different than us. Right. So think about this. this you know, I thought about this as I was as I was looking at, you know, really meditating on the scripture. He breathed us into existence. Right. God, you know, he, he actually breathed us into existence. He spoke us into existence. But, here, but here's the other thing that I find is so, man, I, I find it so miraculous. He also sustains us with that same breath. <laughs> we are, you know, the, the air that we breathe today, it's the same air that God breathed when he created us, when he, when he breathed her, us into existence. And so he is the only one that can demand obedience and then simultaneous, simultaneously call his friends for doing so. He's the only one, <laughs> you know, he's the only one that can demand obedience and then call you friend. 
you know, like I said before, if any, if anybody else does that, you looking at them crazy. What? But God can do that. Amen. You know, we are invited into his, into being his friend, which means what? He cares about relationship. God cares about relationship. In James, in the book of James, uh, chapter two, verse 23, it says this, it says, and so it happened just as the scripture says, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God, the friend of God. And so I also want to touch on, you know, what it looks like communicating with God or talking with God. You know, it's hard to do something with someone if you don't know what they're doing. You know, likewise, it's hard to do what God is doing if we don't know what he's doing. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. It's hard to do something with somebody, right, if you don't know what they're doing. If you don't know, it's hard to do that. But it's also hard to do what God is doing if you don't know what he's doing. You know, I remember Apostle Tony, he preached a message uh, a while back and he talked about how when God, when it looks like God is not doing something, he's doing something. <laughs> when it looks like God is not doing something, he's doing something. You know, Jesus told his disciples that he only did what he saw his father doing. He was aware in his spirit what the father was doing and wanted to do. You know, Jesus knew what the father was doing. Why? Because he spent time with the father. So he knew what he was doing. Right. So, uh, you know, as consistently looking, like I said before, looking through the book of John, the scripture says that Jesus knew. Jesus knew. Scripture also says that Jesus saw what the father was doing. So he knew and he saw. You know, you know, there are a lot, you know, there are lots of ways that God talks with us. He talks with us through dreams, visions, you know, through the word, you know, numerous different ways that he talks with us. Listen, he even, he even spoke through a donkey. <laughs> he, he even used a donkey to speak, you know, to speak to a to man. You know, so talking with God is it's really foundational to having a friendship with, with him. How do we talk with God? However, you talk with God through prayer, as you go about your day, you know, mumbling under your breath, however you talk with God, that's how you talk with God. You know, I, I, in, in, my, in my thoughts, I'm always talking with God. You know, God, what do you think about this? You know, what, what, should, I, what should I do here? You know, that's what he's looking for, a relationship with us. Romans 1 and 20 says this, it says, for ever since the world was created, People have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. And listen to this. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. My God, there's no excuse for not knowing him. There's no excuse. He's given us his word. He's given us Holy Spirit. He's given us all of who he is so that we can get to know him. So that we can, so that we can have a relationship with him. There's no excuse for not knowing God. There's no excuse. And so, you know, listen, life happens, right? Sometimes, you know, we don't want it. We don't want it, but it does. You know, things happen, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, Sometimes, you know, we hope situations might go differently. Uh, it isn't always bad, but, you know, we have to learn to, to process the process. Come on, I'm going to say that again. Process the process. Process the process. What am I saying? If we don't process and discuss and hash out, you know, our thoughts and our feelings on what's happening, we miss out on so much of the gift of the season. We miss out on the gift of the season. You know, come on, say, don't miss out on the gift. Of, put that in the chat. Don't miss out on, this, on the seasonal gift. There's a gift that's waiting for you in this season, is what I'm saying. Don't miss out on that. If we never have a conversation with God about it, how can we know what his heart is in the midst of the circumstance? How do we know his, what his heart is if we never have a conversation with him about it? Come on, say, God, I want to know your heart. 
I want to know your heart. In the book of Romans, Apostle Paul, he talks about how God works all things out for our good, right? And, and his glory, and God's glory. He doesn't waste anything. Sometimes he tests us, you know, unintentionally, but perhaps more so to reveal to us, not him, where we are. You know, not revealing to him, but revealing to us where we are. Man, God is so faithful that he shows us things so that we can grow. He shows us things so that we can grow. He moved, listen, he moves us from glory to glory, being perfected in his likeness. He takes us from one glory to another glory. Why? So that we can be perfected in his likeness. You know, this goes for both easy situations and difficult situations. He's constantly moving us from glory to glory. You know, there's been so many times in my life that I thought, you know, were difficult and painful, you know, and what have you. But through processing it with God, he showed me the gifts he had for me. And it immediately changed my perspective. Immediately changed my perspective. You know, come on, say it again, process the process. We got to process the process. And don't miss out on the gift. Now we are created in God's image and he is perfect community. I'm gonna say that God is perfect community. You know, God the Father, Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit exist in perfect community. <laughs> the unity, the Trinity exists in perfect community. Yet they are, they are distinct in, in, in each way. <laughs> So listen, if we are created in his image, we are created to exist in community. If we are created in the image of God, we're also created to exist in community. The truth is that we need community, but also there are times that we need to be alone in order to function in community. You know, what I mean by this, you know, Jesus was a perfect example of this. He would often wake up early and go away and pray, right? to talk to the father, you know? It was in that place where he was filled to overflowing, right? He is, it was where that, it was in that place where he was built up that so he can operate out of the overflow, you know? And so that when, whenever he encountered someone, they experienced the overflow of love from him, you know? So sometimes, you know, we just have to get away to our quiet place and into communion with God in order to operate out of that overflow. It's important that we get away to that quiet place. It's important that you get to that place where God, it's just me and you. I just want you. I love that song, I just want you. You have to get to that place. Why? Because God wants that time with you. God wants to spend that time with you. Why? Because again, if you want to be his friend, if, he want, if, if he's calling you friend, there's things that he wants to share with you and only you about your life, about your life. There's things, of, there's things that God wants to share with you that, that will literally change the rest of your life. But if you never get into communication with him, if you never get into that quiet place with him, you'll miss out on what God has for you. You'll miss out on what God is trying to reveal to you. Amen. And so think about, you know, when Peter, you know, cut off the servant's ear. Think about that. Jesus, he didn't lash out, on, lash out at him, you know, for that. He told him, you know, this is not... Look, he told Peter, this is not what we're doing right now. <laughs> this is not what we're doing right now. And then after that, what did he do? He fixed the man's ear. You know, so he could, you know, some of us would have been like, Peter, what are you doing? What the world? You know, but Jesus was not like, he was, he was living out of the, out of the overflow from the, from the time that he spent with the father. So his, his immediate response was to love on Peter, even though he was acting recklessly at that time. And so this is what I, I really want to leave you with, if I can. You know, when it comes to friendship, we like to think that, you know, sometimes we have it all figured out, you know. And if we don't, then sometimes, you know, we assume that maybe there's something wrong with me, you know, if we don't have, have it figured out. You know, you may be haunted by the lie that everyone has friends, and you may wonder, why, why is it so hard for me? Why is it so hard for me to gain friends? Why do I feel so disconnected, you know, underappreciated or left out? Why is that? 
I'm going to say it again. You were created for connection. And the bomb to your hurting, your hurt and broken heart and broken narratives is to remember that you have the perfect friend in Jesus. That's the bomb. So, yeah, so when you find yourself in the place where, man, I, I really want some friends, but I can't seem to, to gain any. Remember that Jesus is the perfect friend. That's the bond. If you just keep that at the forefront of your mind, Jesus loves you no matter what. You know, so b- before you step into authentic friendship, it's important to make time for your first friendship. And that's with Jesus. It's important to make that time. Jesus is the perfect friend. Why? Because he knows. <laughs> he knows everything that we're going through. He knows everything that you're going through. He knows, every, he knows your thoughts. He knows everything that's coming against you. He knows all about you. He knows, and that's why he is the perfect friend. And so, he, you know, he also knows what it's like to be rejected, you know, to have rumors circulating about you. He knows all of those things. And so whenever, you, you know, you, you might feel burned out, you know, rejected, lonely, you know, even nervous about friendship. You know, remember that Jesus calls you into an intimate friendship with him. You know, he sees you. You know, he makes God love known to you. And then he will also equip you with everything you need, even the good work of friendship. He'll equip you with everything that you need, even when it comes to being a good friend. He's got all the tools that you need. So listen, man, I just encourage you to just spend some time with them. You know, pray over your friendship struggles and your desires to have friends. Abide in him and he will produce the fruit you long to see in your friendships. Abide in him. That's where the, that's where the key is, abiding in him. And the fruit will be the result of that, the fruit of being able to have good friendships. And so I hope I've, I've given you something tonight that that you can take with you, and uh, I hope that uh, that God is really planting in your heart that yeah, you can have friends, not just friends, but good friends, good friends, authentic friends. It's possible. And so, Father, I thank you for the word that you shared on tonight, Lord God. I thank you for each and every person on this call. And I declare even now, Lord God, that you're causing their hearts to turn back towards those relationships that may be broken, God. God, I thank you that even now, Lord God, that those friends that may have walked away from them, Lord God, that they will be encouraged to pray for them, Lord God. And God, even now, Lord God, that you're causing community to take place, Lord God, in the kingdom, Lord God. For we realize that it is the community that expands the kingdom of God. And so, God, I thank you for the word that was sown on fertile ground on tonight, Lord God. And I declare that it shall produce a harvest. And so for this, God, I give you honor, I give you praise, and I give you all the glory. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So I will turn it over back over to Elder Tracy. Thank you so much. I love you guys. I love you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much, Elder Tyrone, for such an enriching, enriching message. That was so, so rich. I just, I, I want to know if, I want y'all to be honest, when you heard Elder Tyrone sharing the heart of God, did you hear in the background, friends, how many of us have them? Yeah. So anyway, thank you, Elder Tyrone. So, so rich. He told us that a true friend is a gift that friends bear with one another. I love that, that true friends love each other with genuine affection and honor one another. They encourage one another. I don't know about you. I have the kind of friend that, uh, and usually only have one or two. I have the kind of friend that if we ever fell out, I'd have to kill her because she has all my secrets and I can't let them get out. So we all have, I, like, I love what he said that we all got built us for connection. And he told us how to be friends with God and what that looks like in that although God commands us that we are friends if we do what he tells us to do he still desires friendship with us 
he still desires to share secrets with us. And then, then at the end, toward the end, he said, the balm, the B-A-L-M, the healing balm is that we have a perfect friend in Jesus. But the bomb, B-O-M-B, is that we do have a perfect friend in Jesus. Thank you so much, Elder Tyrone. That was so, so good. Listen, we've come to the time where you all can participate. This is our offering time. And I want to encourage you as you give that if you're one of those ones that uh, Elder Tyrone mentioned where you don't have friends or you don't or you're not a friend yourself and you heard him teaching and you thought I want to be that kind of friend I want you to sow into that tonight you know every one of us needs good solid friends and yet God wants us to be a good solid friend so we have a few ways that you can give you can give online at vcmicc.org just make sure you follow those prompts or you can text hashtag VCMICC to 22300 and follow those prompts. I want to encourage you to sow into that word. And as always, all roads lead to Jesus. All roads lead to salvation. And so every time we get together, we want to offer you these four things. Salvation. If you've never known the Lord Jesus Christ, today is your day. We want you to know him. He is the best friend that you can ever have. And if you need to rededicate your life today, it's always a good thing. Or if you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues or church membership, Today is your day. If you want any of these things, or if you simply would like prayer, you can also text hashtag VCMICC to 22300, and someone will, be, someone will be standing by to minister to your need in any of those areas. So listen, we've had an amazing time. You now know how to be not only a friend to someone else, but to be a friend of God. And next week, you don't want to miss next week. We're going to be, we're going to be tackling marriage. We're going to be tackling singles. So listen, if you're married, you want to be in the house. If you think you want to get married, if you're thinking about marriage, you want to be in the house. If you're single, you want to be in the house. So that means everyone needs to be in the house next week as we discuss relational intelligence. So before we go, I want to uh, defer to Pastor Demond. Pastor Demond, if you have anything to say, we'd love to hear it. Hi. <laughs> oh, I don't know if anybody can hear me. Can y'all hear me? I guess you can. No, man. I mean, that was such a great word elder uh tyrone such a great word i think it's a needed word in this time and when you but definitely when you said you mean we need community when friendship has community you're talking about when you look at that word community you look at you see unity in that as we commune as we say come together to have community that was so good i think that's important for us in the season that we don't i mean one thing i want to add on that i was thinking about well, friendships I mean, I, we, me and my wife, we have friends that we've had for almost like 30 years, a long, bit longer. But I realized in friendships, you got to really be willing to go with those friends through different seasons in life. You know I mean, you mean, you might have all been friends when you got single, and then next you know, one person got married, the other person didn't get married. Then with you, one person got kids, the other one don't have kids. You know I mean, it's always, and there's a great grace to be a friend in every season in life that God called you to those relationships. It's not kind for you to throw friends away or throw people away or, or we, they're not, we don't see eye to eye. One thing we can't agree and we can always commune and come in unity together. So in friendships, one thing we have to realize also that, you know what I mean, there'll be, there's a grace to go in season with your friends. You know what I mean? They might not be safe right now, but they, you know what I mean, there's other ways that you can relate to them and you can minister to them through the love of God. So always when he's talking about community unity you know and then community that's so good for me but that's it i love y'all thank you thank you pastor d that was the cherry on top of a well-made sunday thank you so much for that listen before we go we just want to invite you all to join us either physically or online at our 10 a.m sunday worship services we are located at 4415 Crane Highway in White Plains, Maryland. And just so you know, even as uh, Elder Tyrone gave a, a warning where friendship is concerned, we want to warn you that at our church, we're expecting the Lord to do it again. So we want to invite you again Sunday, this Sunday, 4415 Crane Highway at 10 a.m. for our worship service.